Good evening, church family. It is great to get together virtually again. Tonight we're starting a new series that will be carried throughout the summer on the heroes of the faith that we find in Hebrews chapter 11. Throughout the book of Hebrews, we see the author pointing to Jesus being better. And we see him pointing to the covenant that Jesus brings as being better. And by the time we get to the chapter 11, we start seeing where he's applying all that betterness in our lives and what that looks like for us today. So as we walk through the summer, we'll be looking at some of these giants of the faith as they carried out their faith and how Jesus showed even better what that faith looked like. In uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verses 39 and 40, we see kind of the, the landing zone of where this is all going. And these, these heroes of the faith, having gained approval through their faith, did not receive what was promised, but because God had provided something better for us, so that apart from us, they would not be made perfect. We see Jesus and his covenant that he brought as that something better than their faith. Their faith pointed toward this. And so tonight... We're going to begin working through our list of the heroes of the faith uh, and looking at Abel. And let's look at the text here in uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4, where we see Abel mentioned. By faith, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained the testimony that he was righteous. God testifying about his gifts, and through faith, though he's dead, he still speaks. Abel, we, we see him early on in Scripture, uh, and we don't see him a lot in Scripture. We see him very early in the beginning. He's referenced a, a few other times. But just to kind of give the context, uh, Abel, we go back to Genesis. Uh, he shows up in chapter 4, but as we're leading up to this, God had finished creation. God had made the world. God had spoken it all into being. It was perfect. It was wonderful. Adam and Eve are there. And at this point, there had been no bloodshed before the fall. But because Adam and Eve chose that they wanted to do their way instead of God's way, they rebelled against God, ruining their perfect relationship with Him and leading to the fall that affected everything. This pervasive effect of the fall impacted the world around them. It affected them. It affected their relationship with God. And because of that fall, the, the ground was cursed. Uh, there was pain in childbirth. All these things resulted from it. And so we pick up on Adam and Eve's story after they leave the garden, and they've begun uh, doing as God told them, to be fruitful and multiply. They have, they have had two children. Uh, they have had Cain and Abel. We see one as being the one who tended the ground and one who tended the, the sheep and the flocks. And so that's where we, we pick up with Cain and Abel, two brothers that together uh, give us a glimpse uh, to, uh, of faith to come that we see from Abel and Abel's faith. Looking at Genesis chapter 4, verses 3 through 8. So it came about in the course of time that Cain brought an offering to the Lord of the fruit of the ground. And Abel, on his part, also brought the first things of his flock in their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offerings, but for Cain and his offerings, he had no regard. So Cain became angry, and his countenance fell. Two brothers, two sacrifices, yet one is received and one is not. Well, what's the difference? How are these two sacrifices different? Now, we don't know exactly what God revealed to them and what God had told them and how things should be for them, but we see that they, at the appropriate time, they came to make these sacrifices, and we see that they are different sacrifices. Look at Cain's sacrifice that God did not receive and that God did not regard, is, is the word it uses. Uh, and we wonder, well, I wonder what was not right about Cain's offering. Well, we're not positive, but we can infer some things. Uh, we see that it came from the ground and not from an animal. As we read scripture later, we begin to realize that there is no forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood. Now, Scripture never says that the shedding of blood of those lambs is what really brought about the atonement. It points forward to Christ, and we read in Hebrews that it was those things that were reminders of their sin and the awfulness of their sin and the, the horror of their sin that required bloodshed, but it was pointing forward to Christ and pointing toward what he would do. So we, we can guess that one thing that was wrong with Cain's sacrifice was that it, it was not a blood sacrifice. Also, we can guess what was wrong with Cain's sacrifice is that it may not have been his first sacrifice, so that the first fruits and the best fruits. Uh, 
Uh, we see that specified for Abel's sacrifice, that it was his first and his best, but we don't see Scripture telling us that about Cain's. So that kind of lets us know that it probably wasn't his first and it probably wasn't his best. But a third thing is, Cain could have come with his sacrifice not with a clean heart, not with a good heart, not with a good attitude, not with a, an obedient heart of sacrifice. Uh, so, we, again, we're guessing about what it was, but it sure looks like those three things, whether it was one of those things or all three of them, led to that sacrifice not being of good regard with God. But Abel's sacrifice, how is it different? Abel's sacrifice, we see it was a blood sacrifice. This was the second time we see blood being mentioned in Scripture. Before this, we see bloodshed happen as Adam and Eve are leaving the garden and God is sending them out. They have tried to cover themselves with fig leaves. Now, you probably have seen fig leaves before. They are large, but I wouldn't want that to be my only covering. God gave them an appropriate covering. They were ashamed of themselves and ashamed of, of their sin, and, and so they tried to hide. But God gave them an uh, appropriate covering. He, through the shedding of the blood of an animal, made them clothing of skins to better cover them. So we see the second instance of bloodshed happening with Abel and his sacrifice. So, and again, as we know from Scripture, a blood sacrifice is what God expected. We also see from Abel's sacrifice that it was his first fruits, his best fruits. It was all the good stuff that Abel brought to God. And that is, again, what Scripture tells us God wants from us. And then thirdly, we're going to assume that Abel came with an obedient heart, a heart that said, I want to give my best to God. So we see these two sacrifices, two quite different sacrifices. Now Cain's God didn't receive, and as his countenance fell, God actually goes to him and says, what, what's going on? And, and there's this dialogue. But even though God comes to him and encourages him and shows him the right path, Cain still let, holds on to that bitterness and holds on to that, uh, that hurt and doesn't forgive his brother, even though his brother didn't do anything wrong. And yet he, he takes that bitterness and turns it toward his brother, and he kills Abel, and we see this blood shed again. And that's where Hebrews begins talking about how his blood cries out, his blood still speaks. Because when God came to Cain, he said, Cain, I hear your brother's blood crying out. Abel's blood, his faithful blood, still cried out at the time of the writing of Hebrews, and his blood still cries out now. He had a, a faithful life, a one that he was sacrificing and giving, and that life was cut short. That life ended, and he had a, a, a faithful life, and a life that gave out of obedience, a, a faith that, because of the faith, outflowed his obedience, outflowed his works. Again, looking at Cain's sacrifice, we see it came from the earth. Remember, the earth had been cursed. Belief, so part of what was wrong with his sacrifice was that he was giving back to God what was coming from something that was cursed. Just like if you and I try to put on works and we try to, try to rectify our relationship with God, fix our relationship with God through our works, it's coming out of a flesh that is already cursed, much like the ground was, and it will never be adequate. And, the, and so when we counter that to what Abel's gift was, coming out of a heart of obedience, coming out of a, a heart of faith in the real sacrifice that was to come, and the sacrifice that was coming in Jesus, who came and whose blood really speaks more than Abel's. Even in Hebrews, it talks about Christ's blood speaking even more loudly than Abel's later on in chapter 13. But aren't you glad that we have Abel as a testimony of faithful love, a faithful love for a God, a faithful sacrifice, and one that looked forward to the one who could be an adequate covering for us? Jesus is that adequate covering, and it was Abel's faith in that adequate covering that made him right before God and his sacrifice right before God. In the same way for us, it's only when we are in Christ that we are able to please him. And we please God because of what Christ did for us, and his blood is what covers us. And I am so thankful we have Abel as the one to point for us and to, to cheer for us as we run the race with endurance, that, that Christ is there, that we are targeting him, the author and perfecter of our faith. And I can't wait to continue going through these heroes of the faith and seeing how Christ is better and how he fulfills the faith of those that went before us. Let me pray for us. Father, thank you so much for your goodness. Lord, I thank you for the testimony of Abel and his faith and his obedience that came out of that. Lord, I pray that like him, we will have a faith that trusts in Christ alone and the faith that comes from him. And Lord, I thank you for his blood. I thank you for his sacrifice. I thank you for his work that makes us right before God. 
Bless our church family. Use us in this community. Help us to take your love with us as we go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.